What's going on guys, it's Pilot Flame, and we're back with another video and today we're talking about Paladin and its upcoming changes in Final Fantasy XIV's next expansion, Shadowbringers. So today we're looking at all the different actions that we saw from the media tour, uh, which are, as noted, subject to change. Uh, so Paladin has two combos, uh, it's still original Goring Blade combo, and at max or later levels, uh, your Royal Authority combo. Rage of Halone is actually the um, previous ability, uh, that was in the aggro combo, but now that's just a lower skilled ability that combos over Riot Blade that upgrades to Royal Authority with a trait later on. So not really too much has changed there. Uh, so has the job gauge changed? No, it's basically the same thing as before. You still just have Shield Oath, uh, which basically functions the exact same as all the other tanks. Uh, just a 10 second recast timer, which gives you increased enmity, and it's called Iron Will now instead. Um, in terms of uh, the things that also haven't changed too much, uh, fight or flight functions basically the same, shield bash, shield lob, hollowed ground, uh, passage of arms, and intervention all function the same. Uh, in terms of their uh, co other combos, now basically instead of doing a goring blade into roll authority into roll authority, into another Goring Blade and then doing your Requiescat combo. Uh, now you get a buff after finishing Royal Authority, which grants you three stacks of Sword Oath. Uh, basically what this does is for each stack, you can use a new ability that you obtained called Atonement, which delivers a potency attack 550 on the GCD, uh, which store, restores MP and can obviously only be executed under the effect of Sword Oath at level 76. Uh, so now instead of doing Goring Royal Royal Goring, you now do the Atonement uh, spam. So three Atonements back to back to back instead of that second Royal Authority combo. Uh, Requiescat also got its change as well. So now it does even more damage uh, when you initially hit as well as it increases your magic abilities by 50%. Uh, in terms of it using it with uh, Holy Spirit, well now you have a bunch of different options. You can use Holy Circle, which is basically the AoE version of, of Holy Spirit. And then the level 80 ability, the one that we saw in the job action trailer of the giant sword uh, that looked very uh, reminiscent of a Final Fantasy Tactics ability called Confidier. Uh, it costs 2000 MP just like Holy Spirit and Holy Circle out of your 10,000 MP mana pool. Uh, deals unexpected damage uh, with a potency of 800 to all enemies around it with no fall off, including its target. Now with the Requiem Cap off a 50% increase, that is a 1200 potency AOE ability that has no fall off, which is absolutely insane. The downside to it is that it can only be executed while under the effect of Requiescat, and the effect fades upon execution, which means that if you use this as your first ability, Requiescat will immediately disappear. So now, instead of doing five Holy Spirits, or a combination of Holy Spirits and Holy Circles, or five Holy Circles, you do four Holy Spirits into Confidier, or four Holy Circles into Confidier. Uh, considering that you only have one GCD left, and you might as well use it on the biggest hitting one, um, even if the buff was going to run out so before you could use the next one. Um, in terms of their off GCD, Spirits Within got a buff, um, so its potency is slightly increased, but it still has the potency decreases over time as own HP decreases, um, but it's, it restores MP now, and it's still on the same cooldown of 30 seconds. Intervene, a Paladin's uh, ability that functions very similar to uh, Gunbreaker's Rough Divide, which is basically a gap closer on a two-charge system of a 30-second recharge time, uh, which is basically their gap closer where they dash ahead with their shield looking almighty. Uh, their AoE is basically the same, so they have a circle of score where basically most of their seems to be mostly intact. Um, it doesn't have the increased enmity, however, and then their AoE is Total Eclipse into Prominence. Now, Prominence uh, upon combing this action restores MP on hit enemies um, so which is quite good so now what you can do is you can start off with your Requiescat combo uh, using the holy circles into the Confidier and then you can generate that mana back up by using the prominence two part combo in terms of its utility, Sheltron got a very nice buff so it is only it still has a 5 second recast time I believe which was 10 seconds before Still costs 50 gauge, uh, and its duration is six, sec is six seconds. However, it did get a trait which basically allows it to 
block all incoming attacks for the total of duration of Sheltron. So instead of blocking one attack over the six seconds, it will block every attack over the six seconds, which is very, very strong. Uh, Divine Veil basically remains effectively the same. Uh, Intervention also remaining the exact same, costing 50 Oath Gauge. Uh, it also is a note that your Oath Gauge increases off of your auto attacks and not GCDs. Um, which which was a change that was made for Ninja, which we'll see uh, in a later video. Uh, you get a trait at level uh, 78, which is Enhanced Requiesca, which gives it the effect that your spells require no cast time. So that means you can use Confidier, you can use Holy Circle, and you can use Holy Spirit uh, for with instant casts. Um, the Sword of buff that you receive for the after the Royal Authority combo is at 76. Obviously, tanks still contain the tank mastery that all the other tanks will receive as well um, and they still remain uh, as one of the most prominent tanks uh, in the game especially with them being the highest potency over a 60 second window based on the math uh, that we have received from these tool tips um, what else can we see from the paladin well we can also see that their utility was dropped down uh, quite significantly so Cover is now on the same cooldown, same duration, however, it costs 50 Oath Gauge to use. Uh, can only be used in a 10 yam radius, and it does not give you the trait, which we did not see uh, for the Paladin, which reduces damage taken by 20%, uh, basically giving you that Rampart effect when you cover somebody. So now, not only does it, does it cost Gauge, but you also have to pair it with a cooldown, making cover significantly worse. Um, in terms of their overall kit suite, they're obviously super, super strong. They do a lot of damage. Their AoE is absolutely insane. Their raid utility is still the, one of the strongest um, in the game with Divine Veil and Passage of Arms. Their self-tanking cooldowns are super, super strong with Sheltron uh, as well as Sentinel and having the second best invuln and hollow ground in the game. Um, and overall, looking like a, a really, really fun job because they have multiple different ways uh, of dealing damage. Um, they deal damage with their Goring Blade combo, which is their dot, and as well as Circle of Scorn. They have their just straight damage combo with the Royal Authority combo. They have a, a, a physical spamming combo with Atonement, uh, which you use three times, which regenerates your MP for your magic damage combo, which you can do both single target and AoE and giving you that satisfying ability at the end of it in Confidier. One thing that I didn't talk about in the other tank videos was actually the uh, new roll actions uh, that we would see for tanks as well. So with that, uh, you have abilities that are pretty much similar to what we saw with the tanks before, with Rampart, Low Blow, Interject, Reprisal, Shirk, and Provoke all relatively staying the same, with Provoke giving you the ability to go just slightly ahead instead of one uh, enmity ahead of the, uh, the, the second person in line. Uh, the one last thing that you'll notice, the Paladin did not get Tempered Will. That was one of the abilities that was removed. However, they effectively got a buff because Arm's Length is now a roll action uh, for tanks, melees, ranged uh, DPS. So it basically does the same thing as what it did before, six second duration, uh, creates a barrier nullifying you from most knockback slash draw in effects. Uh, with a uh, 15 second duration on the slow, which is only typically used in the PvE environment. However, it does have a 120 second recast time. So for DPS, this is a nerf. Uh, for ranged, it's definitely a buff. And tanks will obviously welcome this ability with open arms, uh, no pun intended there. Uh, but overall, Paladin is looking the strongest out of all the tanks with its ability to do multiple different types of damage, still having great raid utility, as well as its personal cooldowns being uh, slightly enhanced with, with Sheltron, but also still being able to give people what they need um, in terms of their off-tanking uh, abilities. Obviously not to, to as good of an extent as what they did before with cover, but they can still take um, take damage using cover, just pairing it with a separate cooldown, saving you having to swap over um, aggro and stuff like that. But that's it for this video today. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on the video. I know I don't say it 
um, enough, but it is definitely appreciated so that we can grow the channel because we're in this together and we are looking for all of these changes to come true or even more surprises potentially in 5.0. Uh, in the next video, we'll be doing the changes to Dark Knight, so stick around for that. But until then, it's Pilot Flame, and I'm signing out. Take care.